Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to learn how to program a drone to move around using Python. We will also learn how to get the camera feed from this drone and run OpenCV functions on it. As an example, we will detect an object and make the drone follow it around. I upload videos related to robotics on a weekly basis, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep getting the latest updates. So let's get started. The drone we are going to use today is the Telodrone. It is a very easy to use indoor drone designed for beginners. This is not sponsored by Telo, this is my honest opinion. It is an excellent tool to get started with programming of drones. It is cheap and durable and for a little bit more money you can get the combo pack which contains three batteries and extra propellers and the propeller guards. If you are planning to program the drone, I highly recommend getting the combo pack. The link for both the normal and the combo pack is in the description if you want to get yours. So this is the code for running the Tello drone. First of all, we will need the DJI Tello Pi library. We are importing it as Tello and then we will need our CV2 library as well. Now, initially we are defining our parameters of uh, the image size and the counter. Now, if you do not want the uh, drone to fly, you will put one instead of zero. Now, initially we are going to connect to our drone and these are the parameters and these are the velocities of uh, forward, backwards, left, right, up, down and your velocity. So all of these parameters we will set to zero, we will connect it and then we will display our battery to see whether it's good for flight or not and then we will start our main loop. Now in the main loop we are getting our image from the Tello uh, drone and then we are converting or resizing it to our uh, specifications. Once we have done that, we will look uh, into if this is the first frame. If it is the first frame, the counter will be zero, so we should take off. Now, there are multiple ways you can control the drone. One of them is to define how much distance to move forward or left or right. And the other way is to define velocities. So this method is basically defining distance and angle. So this is an example where the robot or the drone will move uh, 20 centimeters to the left and then it will rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Now. After it's done that, it will uh, put the, count, uh, the counter as one and then it will show us the image and it will stop. Well, it will not stop, it will not do anything else. Now, the other method is using velocities that we will be using for the object movement because we don't want to define how much distance we need to move. We want to define the velocity changes. So whenever there is a change in direction, we will add or subtract to our velocity. So this is how you actually send, this is how you send the values of velocity to your Telodrone. So let's run this. First of all, in order to test, we will put this as one. So we just get the camera feed. We do not want it to fly at first. So just make sure you have connected your Wi-Fi to Tello and then we will run. So it seems the drone is off. Uh, if you leave it for a while, it will turn off by itself. So I will turn it on and we will run it again. So here you can see our battery is 92%. And here is the result of the camera feed. So let me move the camera and you can see. So now there is a delay in the camera, but this delay, this lag is, is not very significant when you are actually running the code. It's just the lag in display. So if you are writing some code, you should not worry about the lag. So I have added a pattern here and I have changed the counter to zero. So let's see how that runs. So it should take off, wait for eight seconds, 
to finalize the takeoff and then it will rotate clockwise 90 degrees and then it will uh, take about three seconds to execute that and then it will move left 35 um, centimeters and then it will sleep for three seconds and then it would land so let's see how that turns out Let's have a look at the color object tracking. So what we have here is the CV2 library and the NumPy library imported. And then we are defining our camera parameters and we are moving on to our track bars. Now let's run this and see what happens. So here we can see that we have four images stacked together and initially we have the original image then we are getting the result from the color hsv space and then we are applying a kenny threshold and a kenny edge detector and after that we are creating a bounding box around the object detected and we have the center region as well of this object so based on this center position we can determine where the object is uh, relative to our space so if I move it to the left you can see uh, the left side shows up and then if I move it to the right the right side will show up the same goes for up and down so let's see how that is done so as mentioned before these are the track bars for the hsv space and this is the track bar for the canny edge detector so and then this is the function for stacking the images we just send it a few images that we want to stack together and here we have our main loop which is our while loop so once we read our image we are making a copy of it and uh, this is done so that we can sh display the final results on it and then we have uh, the conversion of hsv space and then we are taking the parameters from this hsv space to get our resultant image so we are going to filter out all the colors except for the colors that we have mentioned here so this is the resultant image uh, it's a bitwise and then we will take this image and add a little bit blur to it and then we will convert it into grayscale and using this image we are going to apply the Kenny edge detector in this Kenny edge detector we will get a resultant image and this image will be quite thin so in order to add a little bit of thickness we will use the dilation function so after this dilation function we will send it to find our contours so we will go to get contour function so let's go and look at that so this is the get contour function here we are finding our contours and then based on the area we are filtering it out and then we are finding the x y and the width and the height of this bounding rectangle and based on this information we are getting the center points of our object now using if statements we are determining where is the location of our object and based on that we are defining whether we need to go left right up or down so once that is done we are also uh, using a function called display to actually display the grid so that we can see the separation or the segmentation of the image and then once all of that is done we are simply stacking it using the stack images function and we are scaling it down to 0.7 percent of its original size so at the end we just display our images so this is our final code where we have merged the previous two codes initially we are having all our libraries imported and then we are defining our parameters as before 
we are connecting it uh, to the Tello drone and then we have our track bars and then we have some functions like the stacking at get contours and we also have the display function and then we are coming back to our main loop now in the loop we are getting our image first and then we are resizing it and then sending it to uh, convert it into HSV space. Once we have done that, we are doing all the calculations we did before and we are getting our contour. Now this time around, we once we get our uh, X and Y position of our object, we are going to define which way the drone should move. So if we look into get contours, the function is pretty much same except for the part where we have a direction as well. So we have a variable by the name direction. So the direction is one if you have to go left, then it's two if you have to go right, then three is four up and four is four down. Otherwise it will be zero. So once we have that, we are going to use this direction to add or subtract to our velocity. Now this is wrong. This should be around 60 and 60 again you can change the values based on how much you want it to move so if i have to move towards the left side so i will i will add minus 60 this is the yaw velocity which means it will rotate and uh, here we have the up down velocity which means it will go up or down so if none of these are happening then we will put all of them to zero and once all of these velocities are decided we will send the final velocities to our drone and then we are going to display our images so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new and i will be bringing a lot more videos regarding robotics so don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and i will see you next time